Do you remember when digital photo frames were the cool new tech item? You've got to be getting on a few years for you to remember that, but if you're my age, I certainly do. There was a couple of years there, perhaps almost 20 years ago now, when they were the new thing and you tended to buy them for your elderly parents or perhaps grandparents for Christmas. It was like the tech item of the moment. And then it wasn't again. It came and went rather quickly. I mean, they made perfect sense. We had our analog cameras, we printed out photos, just stuck them in albums, put them in picture frames, and then we moved to digital cameras and everything was just stuck on the SD card. And you could either page through it on the back of your camera or you could find a way to display it, which was your digital photo frame. It made perfect sense. You could put it on a table, have it cycle through a load of images that were on an SD card. And then we kind of forgot about them again. Yeah, I mean, you can still get them nowadays, but how many people really watching this now have one set up in the lounge plugged in, cycling through their old holiday photos? I suspect it's a very small percentage of viewers. But yeah, I mean, nowadays you can have your photo showing on a screensaver, on your TV, on your set-top box, on your little smart speaker device, perhaps. You can flick through them on your tablet or on your phone, but I suggest that most people watching this when was the last time you looked at those photos you took on your holiday in 2018? I'd imagine, for most people, it probably isn't since you took those pictures. So a digital photo frame perhaps still makes sense, but it's just, for some reason, fallen out of fashion. But do you think the reason that we lost interest in them is because they weren't 3D? I suspect it isn't the main reason. However, that's what I'm going to show you today, a 3D photo frame. Uh, the Looking, Looking Glass Go, easier to show than it is to pronounce. Now, this thing is described as, and I quote, a holographic display for your spatial memories. Now, they're available to buy now. I got mine through Kickstarter. I backed it, I think, early 2024, and I paid around about 25% less than the current £250 retail price. Anyway, Let's have a look at it. Okay, so setup is the familiar process of scanning a QR code that then links you to an app that's available for iOS or Android. You then apply power to the device itself. It's not a rechargeable unit. It needs a constant power supply. And once it's powered up, you get to see some demo pictures that are pre-installed on it. And then you move on to creating a Looking Glass account. And then you connect the device up to your home Wi-Fi. And of course, finally, you finish off with a firmware update. OK, now the big issue with a 3D photo frame is the fact that most of us haven't been taking 3D photos. We might have loads of photos in our libraries, but they're all 2D and therefore not really suitable. And this brings me back to the original Looking Glass Portrait, I think it was called. It was a Kickstarter again, I think. I backed it around about 2020. It was delivered and it just stayed in the box because back then with that model, it was a similar idea, a 3D display for your photos, but you had to take your photos using the iPhone's portrait mode, the one that records the depth data, and therefore the display could use that to reconstruct the 3D scene. Well, the fact is, I didn't take any photos in the portrait mode since I got my iPhone 10, which was the first one that could do that. But once that thing arrived, I thought, right, I'm going to have to start taking some portrait photos so I can demonstrate this thing in a YouTube video. And then I uh, didn't go on very many holidays because of the events and things. I hadn't got really many photos to show. I'd took a few in the portrait mode. I wasn't really that impressed with the ones. And it just years passed. The thing still stayed in its box. And then this one was announced. And this time they had a piece of software that enabled you to use your normal 2D photos, the ones you'd already took, and make those into 3D. They didn't have to be taken in the portrait mode. So I thought, right, I'm gonna start again. I'm gonna get this one, and I'll be able to demonstrate this in the video a lot better than I would the original. So uh, let's see how that software works. Okay, so using the Looking Glass app, you choose a suitable existing image from your photo library and you upload that to your account. During this process, that image is analysed and converted to 3D. You then have three controls with which you can manipulate the image. You can zoom in on the centre, you can adjust the focal plane, 
and you can alter the depth of the 3D effect. And then you work your way through the rest of the images you want to upload in the same manner. You can also just tap on the focal object in an image if you want to, rather than just using that slider. There's also an option to manage your 3D photo playlist and library with an online tool that's called Looking Glass Blocks. And with this, you can also preview the 3D effect before choosing to use that image. And in addition, you can choose to share your 3D images with others, or you can download images that other people have uploaded to be shared. So enough of that, let's have a look at the results. OK, so hologram is one of those much misused words. If this is a hologram, then so is the screen on a Nintendo 3DS. It is much the same effect as that, albeit with a higher resolution and better viewing angles. I describe this as a glasses-free 3D display, and I suspect that somebody walking past one of these might not initially notice that there was anything unusual about the screen. It's only once you go closer to it and you pick it up and move it back and forth that the 3D effect really shows. These images are not going to pop out and punch you in the face, and also you don't feel like you're falling through a portal into another world by looking at it. It's more of a subtle effect that falls away from the screen. It reminds me more of those multi-layer pop-up greeting cards. Now, as far as the controls go on the device, well, other than the power button at the back here with its LED indicator, we've got our controls for skip forward and back, play and pause. Now, if you press the pause button, that freezes the image that's currently on the screen and it won't automatically advance to the next one. So you can pick a favourite and just leave it there like that. It's worth mentioning that this device does not dim at night. It stays on the display as it is now. I've noticed in the middle of the night it was just still showing as it is at the moment. Perhaps there's future updates they can do to have it dim at certain times and also maybe adjust the speed of the slideshow. At the moment it's just fixed to cycle through the images one after the other at the same speed. Now Images like this, you can see, if you get quite close to them, there's a bit of a graininess going on there. Of course, this is made out of wool, but maybe you can tell with me here that uh, you want to get your image quite large on the screen. The further away it gets, the smaller the thing that you're focused on, the more indistinct it gets. Now, skipping through the images here, we can go to the next one, the one after that. Eventually, you'll get a little bit of buffering and you'll start to see that little image appear on the screen there while it's loading in. So it's definitely storing some of these images in its memory, but I don't think it can store all of them. Now, if we just go forward, I want to show you something that's a little bit unusual on this motorbike. The processing here, I'll just pause it on that one. It's got the processing a little bit wrong. Notice how the guy's helmet is in the background whilst his bike is in the foreground. It's the only one though, that I've seen where it's gone that far wrong. Sometimes things look a little bit odd, but overall it's doing a really good job of the processing on these 3D images. It's uh, remarkably good at times. Now, inevitably, this software still needs some work. The most noticeable omission for me is the lack of ability to pan left and right when cropping in on an image. At present, unless the thing you want to crop in on is dead centre, then you're going to need to crop your pictures in another piece of software before importing them. And for this reason, I ended up creating a separate album in my photo library of duplicated and suitably cropped images that I could then easily import into the Looking Glass Go. Another feature I'd welcome is bulk importing. At present, it's just one image at a time, and then it throws you right back to the beginning, doesn't even remember the navigation to the folder that you were last in. And if you want to know about the specs, well, the screen on this, that's six inches, just over 15 centimetres, nine by 16 aspect ratio with a resolution of 1440 by 2560. It's powered over USB-C, and there is supposed to be an optional battery pack, but I can't find any details of that on the website at the moment. In addition to being a photo frame, it can be attached up to a computer and used as a display for certain applications, one of which is supposed to be a virtual avatar that's powered by ChatGPT using a piece of software called Lightforms. And whilst it's not something that appeals, I attempted to show this for the video, but unfortunately, whilst I created my Looking Glass account using an Apple ID, when it came to connecting the Lightform software, that didn't recognise Apple IDs. So it was the end of that idea. But frankly, I was slightly relieved as chatting to a 3D chat GPT avatar held zero interest. 
But I should mention that if you are into doing more with this display and you have the technical know-how, then you can. And in the future, it is supposed to be adding support for video. And you can see on the device itself, there's already a three and a half millimeter audio jack on the base that's currently unused, but presumably reserved for future functionality. Now, it was only once I received this that I noticed it included six months membership to something called Looking Glass Plus. Further digging around revealed that Looking Glass Plus would normally cost $10 a month or $100 a year and would enable 300 minutes of chatting to that light forms avatar thing, but more importantly, 100 3D image conversions. Yeah, I had no idea that there was a limit on that number. Now, this page is confusing. It doesn't say 100 a month, and when I change the subscription plan to yearly, it still shows as 100. So I don't know if this is in total or per month or per year, but there is a limit. And the limit on the free account is just 20. So at some point, uploading more images to this is going to cost more money, which isn't ideal. Now, I understand there's processing to be paid for, but it's also something that I'd never considered. And I'll be darned if I'm paying $100 a year to run a digital picture frame. I've got enough subscriptions already. And this brings me on to the biggest issue that I have with this display. It's the fact that it is in a portrait orientation. And yet the vast majority of photos that I take with my cameras are in landscape orientation. I very rarely take any portrait photos at all. Now, I'd imagine in my library, using all the cameras I've got, all the photos I've got stored in there, I'd suggest perhaps 99% plus are in landscape. I'd imagine there's some people where it skews completely the other way, where people have only ever taken photos with the smartphone and they're perhaps quite a bit younger than me and they're just used to taking photos in portrait. I would suggest though that portrait orientation is not the best way to compose a 3D image. It's really quite restrictive. You see, if you have a landscape image, you could have your person here in the foreground, you can have perhaps a, a bench or a tree behind them. You can have the landscape, the scenery behind them, clouds off in the distance. You've got a lot of stuff to play around with. When you try to squash all that into portrait orientation, you still want to keep the person quite up front and close because the smaller they get, the more grainy they get. So if you had a person in your scene that you're making up, you want them quite large uh, and central almost, uh, almost full frame top to bottom, which leaves you very little room to do your 3D. So you could perhaps move them halfway down the frame, have maybe some mountains behind them or something. But really, you, you miss out on that ability to have various different layers of 3D because you, you're stuck with this orientation, which just lends itself to just stacking things one above the other as far as 3D goes, rather than spacing them out from the left to the right of the frame. So in summary, and I'm glad I gave this a go. It does what it set out to do. It works as advertised. It just doesn't really work with what I like to do, which is take photos in a landscape orientation. Now I thought I'd better get by that by looking through small photos, picking some out of the library that would look good on this. As it was, I've had to look back through over three years of photos just to find a small selection that I think would display well on this. I mean, you might have loads of photos in your library, but there aren't many that have that kind of foreground and background that would fit in a vertical orientation display, at least that weren't in my photo library. So I've got lots of holiday photos, but very few that I'd like to show on this. And I've ended up having to go back through years just to find a small handful of photos that might look good on it. And that means therefore I've got a display that's showing photos that I probably wouldn't normally want to show. They're not my best photos. They're just the ones that are best for this display. I think though the, the main problem that this one's gonna suffer from is apathy the same as the digital photo frames there was that whole thing i think this might be the reason why a lot of people went off them with the admin involved you know you take you go on holiday you take some photos you've therefore got to put those photos into a separate folder the folder that you'd want to display on your digital photo frame back in the day it was putting them on an sd card nowadays it'd be somewhere up in the cloud but you have to kind of go through your photos organize them get the ones that you want that will display well it, it's just it's a bit of work that most people probably can't be bothered with. And then of course you've got all that business about paying to keep this thing working. I know which way this thing's going. I'll play around with it for a bit and then I'll lose interest and it'll just end up in a drawer. And I'm, I've been here before, so I know what's going to happen. Even if this time it's in a vertical orientation and 3D, it's the same old story. But 
Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>